Good morning to you and to all those who tune in every morning. We start our briefing today conveying our condolences to three families and three groups of friends for the death of three people yesterday. We convey on behalf of all the healthcare workers uh, who worked so hard to preserve the lives of our patients. The first deceased is a 73-year-old female patient who died at the Frank Paez Hospital here in Havana. She was from Old Havana Municipality. She had a history of heart insufficiency, diabetes mellitus, and a chronic lung obstruction disease and a renal insufficiency grade 3. She was admitted um, during the, for eight days and five, five of them under an intensive care. And despite all the efforts by our health professionals and technicians, she had a, a cardiac respiratory arrest and passed away yesterday. The second is an 80-year-old female patient, also from Havana, from the Plaza de la Revolución Municipality, who died at the Salvador Allende Hospital with the pre-existing condition of ischemic heart disease. After 16 days of hospitalization in intensive care, she was one of the patients who we had reported to be as critical in previous days. And she passed away yesterday after an event of septic, septic shock and other complications. We also regret the loss yesterday of a 95-year-old female patient, also from Havana, from La Lisa municipality, with a history of high blood pressure and diabetes mellitus, who had a very torpid evolution. She was admitted for a few days and her condition worsened as of April 26th and passed away yesterday. These are the three deaths we are reporting from yesterday, which we regret and we reiterate our condolences. At this moment, we can inform that uh, there are 2,954 patients admitted in our hospitals. 40 are under surveillance, 2,157 are suspected cases, and 757 are confirmed cases. In the primary health care system in the communities, 6,972 people remain under observation. Yesterday, 2,003 samples were studied to diagnose the presence of SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 disease. In the laboratory of the Pedro Curi Tropical Medicine Institute, 1,296 samples were studied. Great effort by the staff of this laboratory as well as of the other units. In the molecular biology in Villa Clara, 273 samples, in Havana, 198, in Santiago de Cuba, 94, at the Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, 94, and at the Brothers Amejeras Laboratory, 58 samples. Of them, 34 tested positive. And here, allow me to clarify something. When I say that samples were studied yesterday, some people said that the processing time of the samples probably started earlier. What I am reporting here are the results of the, of the studies of the samples as they were presented on the day.
They were presented yesterday. The results were presented yesterday. In some cases, the samples were collected the day before yesterday. But what I'm referring to are the results that were obtained and reported yesterday. As I said, 34 samples tested positive, and this represents 1.7% of the 2003 samples started, at some point we were reporting 2.6% uh, of the samples started. So up to now, Cuba already accumulates 47,344 samples and 1,501 have tested positive. They represent 3.2% of the processed samples in our country. Of the 34 new cases confirmed, all who are Cubans, 29 of them, that is 85.2% of them were contacts of confirmed cases, and 5, that is 15%, the source of infection is being investigated. As you can notice, the number of asymptomatic patients varies from time to time, and that makes healthcare personnel who work on these procedures to feel uncomfortable as we are unable to trace back the source from whom the person got the virus. And then we continue investigating to see if we can actually trace back the source of the contagion. Last night, we made a cut on the amount of people who had tested positive while asymptomatic, and there were 198. And after the back tracing, that amount was reduced to 52. So when we say here that the source of infection has not been established, it means that up to the moment where the disclose, we disclose the data, it has not been established, but the investigation goes on in an attempt to discover all the sources of infection that might be out there. Yesterday, the largest number of positive cases were male, uh, with 52.9%, and 67.6% .6 were asymptomatic. Dr. Georgina was asking me to clarify this, since many people have expressed doubts because asymptomatic cases are high-risk patients. Uh, and any of us who has not complied with the protection measures can be a, an asymptomatic case. So it doesn't necessarily mean that a person, because he or she has not been exposed and is kept under surveillance, has necessarily to be asymptomatic. The asymptomatic cases appear during studies where risk groups are prioritized, but others are studied as well. Regarding the distribution of the new cases per provinces, the province of Havana has the most cases with 18 cases, 52% of them, and Matanzas has 10.29% of the confirmed cases. By age groups, the age group with the most cases yesterday were the ones from 20 to 39 years of age with 11 cases, and above all, the group from 40 to 59 years with 16 cases, with 47.1%. And as we always say, to measure risks, one has to follow the positive rate per 100,000 inhabitants. Notwithstanding the confirmations reported in Havana, the special municipality of the Isle of Youth stands with the highest rate stands with the highest rate with 47.6% 
Havana is at the second place with a 30.5% rate. Villa Clara 24.3, Ciego de Ávila 18.7, Matanza 16.6, Santi Espíritu 13.1, Mayabeque 11.7, Pinal del Río 8.6, Holguín 8.3, Artemisa 6, 6, and Cienfuegos 5.8 per 100,000 inhabitants. The rest the rate of the rest of the provinces remain below 5%. And we would like to point out that those with the least cases is Grama with 1.2, Las Tunas with 2.8, Guantanamo with 3.1, Santiago with 4.8, and come away with 4.9. Of course, in no way this means that these provinces are exempted from the risk of the disease. Of the 1,501 patients diagnosed with COVID-19, 747 that are admitted to hospitals have a stable clinical condition. When we add this number to those, who have not died or who have not been evacuated, then we are speak, talking about that 90.7% of confirmed cases in Cuba have a stable clinical evolution. Since the outbreak began, we grieved the cumulative loss of 61 people which represents a lethality of 4.1%. As I have explained as well, lethality is, cal is calculated by the number of people diseased divided by the overall number of cases that have tested positive. In this case, in the region of the America, Cuba ranks number 12. Since there, there is a number of countries that have less fatalities, the lethality of the region of the Americas is 5.7%. That is, of every 100 people who get infected with COVID-19 in the region, roughly six people die. As I said, Cuba has a lethality of 4.1 and stands at the 12th place of the overall ranking in the region. There are countries with very high lethality rate, like Barbados, Bahamas with 13.8 each, Guyana with 17.3, Antigua and Barbuda with 12.5, the United States with 5.76, Brazil with 6.98, Canada with 5.72, Mexico with 9.37, and Honduras with 8.94. Today, in our country, six patients remain in critical condition and four patients are in serious condition. Today in Cuba, the amount of visitors and foreigners does not change much. There are 11,457 visitors, 6,728 Cubans who reside abroad, and 4,729 foreigners. In rental houses, 947 foreigners concentrated in the municipalities we always mention, Santiago de Cuba, Centro Habana, Plaza, and Playa. Turning now to the international situation, despite the lapse of time in which the pandemic has been spreading, the world is still reporting 183 countries reporting um, 
positive cases of COVID-19. 3,052,370 confirmed cases, 69,682 cases more than the day before. You can draw your own conclusion of the amount of people getting infected every day. And what it's worse, the amount of people dying in only one day, 6,370 for a cumulative total of 216,563 fatalities in the world for a lethality of 7.09%. The region of the Americas is not doing well either. This morning I was watching some images from Brazil, and not only the, the images, but also the attitude from some governments that sometimes obstruct the control needed. And the region of the Americas reports 1,252,601 confirmed cases, 37,496 more than the day before. The region of the America already accounts for 41.04% of the total of cases reported in the world. In one day only, the region reported the death of 3,216 people for a cumulative of 7,195 71,085 fatalities for a lethality of 5.67%. And with this, we wrap up all the information that we had to offer you uh, today.